I play uh, Dr. Louise Banks, who is a linguist and a professor. And she's called upon uh, by the United States government to help decipher an alien language, as there have been 12 ships that have arrived on the planet. And uh, she ends up being part of a team that goes in to try to figure out what they're telling us and why they're here. I sat down and met with a linguist, and what I realized is it's impossible to learn everything a linguist knows in one, two, three, four. There's a reason you have to like go to a lot of school. But what the thing that helped me and kind of freed me is I always assumed that a linguist was an expert at speaking languages, when in reality it, it not, it's not always the case because there are um, different types of linguistics. And she said, uh, the linguist I spoke to said, oh, I, I understand languages, but I don't speak them. She only speaks, I think, two languages. So that freed me up, because I was like, oh, I have to play a person. She's like, I'm not a translator. And I was like, oh, there's translators and then there's linguists. She studies um, sort of, uh, though my character speaks a couple languages, she more studies the um, anthropological significance of language and culture and sort of how people speak to another and how languages originate. So yeah, I, I did a lot of reading, and I realized I wouldn't be a good linguist. Denis is another huge reason that I was attracted to this, because once I read the script and really loved the character, I sat down with him, and the way that he saw it was how I read it, which isn't always the case. And so he really wanted to tell it as an intimate story of this woman, and it just happens to be placed in this amazing sci-fi universe. And so it, I, I knew that it would have a really, a really um, deep heart, and that was important to me. Um, and yet be really visually um, interesting and he, he had such a, a wonderful way of um, describing to me what the uh, aliens would look like and, and how the language would be expressed and, and um, yeah, he, he's a very special director, very special man. Ian is more scientific. Uh, he plays a scientist, it's uh, Jeremy Renner. And I was so excited. I've worked with Jeremy before and just had a great time. And Jeremy's got that great way of like playing that in a fun way. And, and yet, having worked with him and having worked with him on American Hustle, and he played this amazing character in that. And then, due to editing, you know, everybody's characters, but you didn't get to see all the scenes where he was so vulnerable and emotional. And I just knew he would be so awesome as Ian, as this um, completely supportive character and supporting, you know, not a lot of guys will show up and play the supporting role to a female character and Jeremy didn't even blink and I'm so appreciative because he's so, so good in this and so sweet and like sexy because he's so sweet, you know, and, and so present. It's, it's, it was, it's such a joy to work with him and he's hilarious and he makes, makes me laugh all the time. The Sphere is the spaceship, and Denis, one of the things I was excited about when I, when I sat down, and again, my kudos to the visual effects, and kudos to all of these artists who create these universes that I just get to place these characters in. Um, it's, it's kind of just a sphere, and it's this beautiful, seamless black object that floats above the ground. And um, that's where we do the majority of our work. And it's this anti-gravity um, existence. It's like an altered gravity, altered universe. And yet we can exist within it to communicate with these beings. Ian communicates through mathematics. And that's a very valid way to communicate. You can communicate through code. You can communicate you know, with numbers and, and patterns. And, and that's how he learns to communicate. And I communicate through connection and in a way, the same way, through pattern, through repetition. And um, we work together and we find this way to communicate with them that then can break down the way that they communicate. And, um, you know, I tried to do, I began by doing the spoken word and I realized that's pointless. So we begin to communicate with them through visual communication and that starts to work. And then we get to see their amazing way of writing and, and we have to decipher what their language means. It's, it's, it's fun.
Well, there's 12 ships that have arrived. And, you know, of course, everybody it puts the world on edge. We're not sure why they're there, but they seem to be desperately trying to communicate something to us. So, you know, Louise really believes that we need the 12 to, to work as a unit. And without the, she's like, we need to be working together to decipher this. And yet countries are sort of pulling away and wanting to, you know, protect their information. And so it, it really is about trying to get the world to come together to solve the bigger issues. He wanted it to feel like it could happen any day. So it doesn't exist in another universe. It exists in our universe. It exists in our reality today. There's no sort of taking a leap of faith. It's, it, it, it is real. It is happening. It could happen tomorrow. It's not, there's no sort of leap of faith in the, in the way that we perceive this film. I started um, crying. <laughs> After doing the first take with him, because I uh, this happens to me occasionally when I work with people I've idolized for years and years, is I just sort of have a moment, and I don't mean to, but it just kind of gets me. Like I just did a scene with Forrest Whitaker, and that happened. Um, it happened to the uh, the DP too. The two of us had a moment. We we're like, what? Um, and he is he's just a, a beautiful soul, Forrest. And he has uh, such a beautiful way of communicating. And there's a way that he has about him that is in charge, but it's done in a way that you love him deeply for his power and his vulnerability. One of the things that he always stayed really true to, and one of the things that was important, um, our first conversation, he says, the only way into this film is through Louise. So if we get her right, we get the film right. And so I knew he always was paying very close attention. Because sometimes it's easy in, in sort of, um, you know, male-driven films or films that are, you know, typically male-driven to sort of see your way in through the male character. And we have wonderful male characters in this as well, a wonderful, um, you know, wonderful cast of, of men. But he always understood not to lose sight of Louise. And, and that's a wonderful thing. Uh, for a director to to truly understand how to see the way into the movie through the female's point of view. Hey, did you like that video? Well, I've got some movie trivia for you. Did you know that, like Facebook, Star Wars was originally prefixed by the definite article the? Hmm, much cleaner without it, don't you think? For this and more movie facts, click on more videos. Or for more trailers, click on the playlist.